It is a story that no one can stop talking about, the shooting of Trayvon Martin. It seems like every day we learn about a new piece of the puzzle, and every day the outrage only seems to grow. But rather than allow the rhetoric to overshadow the facts of this case, we're going to step back and walk you through the night that Trayvon Martin was killed minute by minute. 7-11 p.m., February 26th, a rainy night in Sanford, Florida. George Zimmerman calls 911 to report a suspicious person in his neighborhood. That call would last four minutes. Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. Uh, um, the best address I can give you. This guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. It's raining, and he's just walking around looking about. Okay, and this guy, is he white, black, or Hispanic? He looks black. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah, a dark hoodie, like a gray hoodie, and either jeans or sweatpants and white tennis shoes. He's here now. He was just staring. 712, phone records show Trayvon Martin is on the phone with his girlfriend. 713, Zimmerman is giving the dispatcher directions when he says the subject took off. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. Okay. 715, Zimmerman hangs up with 911. Okay, no problem. I'll let them know to call you when they're in the area. Thanks. You're welcome. At the same time, at 715, Trayvon Martin's girlfriend tells ABC News she's still on the phone with him. He said his man was watching him. He was there, which, which was uh, following me from him. And the man was there, what you doing around here? Somebody push Trayvon because the head is dead. 716, the line goes dead. At about the same time, a neighbor's call to 911 reveals background screaming and then a gunshot. Do you need police, fire, medical? Um, maybe both. I'm not sure. There's just someone screaming outside. Okay. And is it a male or a female? It sounds like a male. And you don't know why? I don't know why. I think they're yelling help, but I don't know. Just send someone quick. Say crap. Okay. Does he look hurt to you? I can't see him. I don't want to go out there. I don't know what's going on. So they're sending. So you think he's yelling help? Yes. All right, what is your number? <laughs> There's gunshots. You just heard gunshots? Yes. How many? This one. 717, Officer Timothy Smith, the first to arrive. And according to the partial police report, the officer says, I was advised by the dispatch that the report of shots fired. And in the span of two minutes, Smith canvasses the scene, spots George Zimmerman wearing a red jacket and blue jeans, observes a black male wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt laying face down in the grass, questions a man in the red jacket who admits to shooting the subject and still being armed, secures a 9mm gun and places the man in handcuffs. The officer observes a man in handcuffs bleeding from the nose and the back of his head, according to the police report. All of this in about two minutes, the police report says. A very tight time window, according to senior law enforcement instructor Alex Manning. You really want to know what happened in those couple of minutes? Were they still running? Was he walking around uh, looking for Trayvon or was Trayvon heading out of there? So in those two minutes, you really don't know what exactly happened. 719, two minutes after Smith, a second officer arrives, Ricardo Ayala who observes Zimmerman already in Officer Smith's custody. Sometime between 7.19 and 7.30, Ayala says he tries to get a response from the subject on the ground. A sergeant arrives, checks a pulse. There is none. And both officers begin CPR. Another sergeant arrives and takes over chest compressions from Officer Ayala. The fire department arrives, attempts to revive the subject. And at 7.30, a paramedic pronounces the subject, Trayvon Martin, dead. Then the police report says Zimmerman is placed in the back of Officer Smith's patrol car and given first aid. But exactly when that happened is a matter of dispute. Criminal defense attorney Holly Hughes. And we don't even know what time the EMTs arrived. If it took them five additional minutes to arrive, you're now down to five minutes for them to perform a complete medical examination on him. If he's in that bad a shape, 
they're not going to do something that takes five minutes. They're going to bandage him if he's got a gushing gash in the back of his head. The timestamp on this Sanford police surveillance video shows Zimmerman and officers arriving at the station at 7.52, 35 minutes after the first officer arrived at the crime scene. The police station is a 15-minute drive away. Earlier, I was joined by Alex Manning, a senior law enforcement instructor, and I asked her after she just saw what she just saw, uh, what that timeline revealed to her. Here's what she had to say. This reveals there was little, if any, medical attention given to George Zimmerman. If the paramedics were with Trayvon Martin until 7.30 when they pronounced him dead, according to my calculations, I have taken about 14 to 15 minutes the to, from them to get Zimmerman from the scene to the police station. I have them only attending to Mr. Zimmerman between 7.30 and 7.38, about eight minutes to do an assessment, to treat him for any wounds, he wasn't injured that bad. Wow. You're, and as a law enforcement person, you are taking a stand and saying that you can't believe it within that amount of time. I can't believe it. Unless I'm missing something. This is a partial report. But if I just look at what I have, eight minutes is the most time they spent treating Mr. Zimmerman.